The standing waves appearing on a guitar string are the result of the superposition of several waves whose frequency and amplitude are identical, but moving in opposite directions. The combination of different waves in the same region of space is called interference. In some places, these waves cancel each other out to create destructive interference and form nodes. In other places, the waves add up to create constructive interference and form antinodes. Since nodes and antinodes always occur in the same places, the result is called a standing wave. The distance between two consecutive nodes or two consecutive antinodes is equal to half a wavelength. The frequency, f, of the wave is then equal to the ratio of the speed, v, of the wave in the string and the wavelength, lambda. The note perceived by the ear is linked to this frequency. When you pluck a guitar string, the sound produced can be approximated to a superposition of several sinusoidal standing waves of different frequencies. Of course, the amplitudes in this simulation are exaggerated. Certain conditions, such as string length, limit the frequencies that can resonate. For example, the first mode of oscillation is characterized by a resonant standing wave with a node at each end and an anti-node in the center of the string. The wavelength lambda then corresponds to twice the length of the chord, L. The integer, n, is 1 in this case. The frequency of this fundamental mode is linked, as we have seen, to the wavelength and the speed of the wave. The fundamental frequency is therefore the lowest frequency that can appear in a string attached at both ends. This is the first harmonic. If the string is shortened, the wavelength decreases and the frequency increases. The speed of the wave in a string varies according to the tension force, Ft, and the linear mass density, mu, of the rope. If the tension is increased, the frequency also increases. Conversely, the smaller the linear mass density or the string thickness, the higher the frequency. The wavelengths of the other possible oscillation modes are calculated by replacing and by 2, 3, etc. The frequencies of these modes are therefore integer multiples, n, of the fundamental frequency. These are the harmonics. Depending on the relative amplitude of the different harmonics present in the string, a complex harmonic spectrum is obtained. It's the tone of a musical instrument. For example, a flute and a guitar, even though they play the same fundamental note, have different harmonic spectra and therefore specific and distinct sounds. If you are interested in the subject, you will find a link to this simulation and several others in the description.